Hey guys, what's going on? So today we are going to New York City and I wanted to make a kind of a vlog style but not really video where I talk about kind of just personal protection, safety, being not in a vulnerable position when you're going to um, communist countries, I, I, I mean states, like New York City. This is America. Or like California where you're not really able to bring a firearm in and if you try, there's a good chance you'll either get it confiscated or have to spend hours and hours and a lot of money trying to figure you know, trying to figure out how to get your firearm back. So I'll explain kind of the context as to why I'm going and why I'm going right now during a season of uh, pandemic. Although I do believe that the restrictions in New York City are on their way out. But yeah, I'm excited for you guys to be able to come along with me, see what I'm doing to make sure that I can stay as prepared and as, uh, I guess, just not vulnerable as possible without being able to bring a firearm into the area. So I believe this is a more difficult subject to break down and talk about because when it comes to accepting and being just consenting of adopting a more responsible approach to living and that includes you know involving personal protection and protecting yours as well, like your family, your friends, the people that you care about in your community. I think that you really need to think a lot about the risk that you're willing to take on and why you're doing it. So for example, in this case, when it comes to going to New York City, where I know I'm not gonna be able to bring my firearm, and even if I were, I wouldn't be able to legally carry it around with me. Um, I have to ask myself, okay, why am I going? Is it really worth you know, making that compromise? Uh, and, and I've done some trips before where I've had to just leave my gun at home and it's been a little anxiety producing just because you're so used to having it. I'm not a freak when it comes to um, preparedness or being, you know, strapped with a backup gun on me at all times. No, I'm, I'm pretty normal, I like to think. <laughs> but I think it is, there is some level of discomfort when and just having an overall inability to be fully relaxed when you're doing specific things without having your firearm on you. And whether that's good or bad, I mean, that's, that's a bad thing because we live in a world that's broken, that is separated from God, and where sin and evil exists, you have to be able to um, protect and defend against those things that would wish to do you and your loved ones harm. And so the reason why I'm going to New York City is because I have a professional gig. I'm a professional videographer. So I was contracted to go out to New York City, shoot a video for this evangelical company, this organization that is doing some amazing things around the world. It's a, a company that I believe in. It's a ministry that I really think is doing amazing work, bringing young people like me uh, and my age to Christ. And so I think the reasoning for going to New York City is definitely there. And it's something that I want to be a part of. And I think it's meaningful. Um, when it comes to like you, for example, and you're thinking about, oh, where should we go on vacation? Um, whether or not you choose to go to a place where you know you're not gonna be able to bring your firearm, um, that's up to you. I mean, there are a lot of states that have reciprocity with other states' concealed carry permits. Uh, and, and even beyond that, you can bring a firearm into most states uh, if you're flying from a state to a different state. So there are a lot of options that you can go with that are not like New York City. I think New York City is just one of the more extreme examples of super strict gun control, almost to the point where it's impossible to you know, get a permit. <laughs> There's some cases going throughout the legal process of maybe trying to make the uh, journey that is required to get a permit slightly easier, but I wouldn't hold out on that and I'm not really paying all that close attention to the legal cases uh, regarding New York City's gun laws and the changes that they could or might not undergo. Ultimately, yeah, we're here to talk about ways you can stay strapped and be prepared without being able to bring a gun into either a state or just a different country that you're flying or traveling to. So let me grab my gear and we can begin. Uh, so first off, this is my Warrior Poet Society ankle trauma kit, and I like to have this wherever I go yeah, because it has some life-saving gear that I could use either on myself or on someone who is in desperate need of it. Uh, although I would highly recommend that you save this for yourself um, or your loved ones. And you know, if there's someone bleeding out on the road, then 
yeah, I'd, I'd say probably utilize some of this gear, but make sure that you have extras and backups just in case something were to happen to you. Um, in this, I carry uh, some compressed gauze, tourniquet, uh, NSI, NSAIDs, NSAIDs, that uh, just for treating pain, band-aids, as well as a multi-tool. And the more you put in this little pouch, the more it tends to print on your leg. I also have an Opaz little Velcro patch that says my blood type. But yeah, this is not necessarily a low-vis way to carry medical gear because it is a little bit bulky. And if you wear skinny jeans like I do, um, there tends to be some printing. Uh, I do know that the type of tourniquet you carry can impact this. So if you were to carry a soft tee tourniquet, that uh, doesn't print as much as the cat tourniquet because of the little plastic ridge. But I haven't had all that much problems because I put the plastic ridge face down. And so the printing happens towards the bottom of my ankle, which I'm okay with that little plastic piece being there. And so, yeah, that's the first piece of gear that I make sure that I fly with, travel with, and carry on me when I am leaving the state or the country. This is something that I'd make sure I keep in my checked bag. Uh, and this is just a pocket knife. It is a K-Bar knife. I don't know much about the company, but um, my father-in-law, uh, I'm engaged, so he's not my father-in-law yet, but uh, my soon-to-be father-in-law gave me this just quick deploy um, with a spring-assisted uh, blade. And so I would recommend that uh, you might look into some training when it comes to using either edged weapons or even just blunt weapons. Uh, one art that comes to mind is Kali. There are some great resources online to learn the basic alphabet of Kali, like the simple strikes. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And depending on the school that you go with, there are eight, there are 10, there are a lot of different ways to, to skin a cat with a knife. And yeah, I'd recommend that no matter what tool you're carrying, you're choosing to carry, whether that be a knife, whether that be a tourniquet or a med kit or a firearm, you get training, you know how to use it. That is pretty crucial. Uh, because if you have gear that you don't know how to use uh, and you need to use it, then good luck. Okay, moving on from the knife, um, what next? Oh yeah, uh, when I'm flying, because I have to, Put this in my checked bag. I can't carry the knife onto the actual plane with me. I do like to have this Warrior Poet Society pen. And it is, it's got a screw cap and it has two different ends to it. One is a ballpoint, the other is a glass breaker, or it could do some serious damage to soft tissue as well if you know where to strike. Um, yeah, there are a lot of places that you can uh, do some damage with this pen. And when you are flying with it, John Lovell, who is the one who uh, is pushing this product, uh, he, he recommends that you put the ballpoint side facing out. And uh, I have flown with this. It's gotten through TSA, no problem. And I am much more comfortable having this than having absolutely nothing. So... Uh, a great thing for your actual flight that you can have on your person. Now this next piece of gear is also something you can carry through TSA with you that you can have on your airplane and throughout your entire duration of your trip. And it's kind of two in one. It's a, it's a backpack, Vertex specifically, but um, you can buy some just general backpack armor panels that can go in any backpack. You don't have to have uh, a Vertex branded bag for this to work. It just makes it easier because they have a hidden compartment in the back that allows you to place a body armor plate. Space for a soft armor plate insert, and this is a level 3A rated, so it will stop all handgun rounds, stop shotguns, stuff, different loads that you can put in shotguns, slugs, buckshot, um, dragon spray. <laughs> the armor itself weighs close to nothing, so it's not really anything you notice on your back, and that is a pretty good compromise to benefit ratio that I'm willing to take on. When it comes to getting like a rifle rated plate that I that can do the same, um, serve the same purpose, I think the weight of that would just be a little bit more than practical for an EDC bag. Um, but if you're specifically using that only to travel overseas or to communist states within America, such as New York City or California, um, then it might be worth it. It might be an okay trade-off for you to take on, but rifle rated plates are expensive and these are much less so. So those are some of the tools and just pieces of gear that I am bringing with me to New York City. It was definitely a blast. My first time over 
to New York City and I would definitely go again. Um, let me know in the comment section if you guys have any questions about this gear uh, or if you have any recommendations that I might have missed because I am a gearhead and I love to learn and just find out what you guys are using and what you might be recommending as well uh, so that I can add that to my overseas or New York City arsenal. Please like this video, uh, share it with your friends if you found any of the information to be useful and we will see you guys later.